Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rosta. Jennifer Vest says that the Caribbean is a site where multiple cultures, people, ways of thinking and acting have come together and where new forms of philosophy are emerging. We're very happy to be speaking with one of the directors of the Caribbean Yard Campus, Roel Gibbons, and a co-founder of the Philosophical Society of Trinidad and Tobago, Burton Sankarali. They join us to discuss the philosophy behind the Caribbean Yard Campus and their dry season courses for 2024. Gentlemen, thank you very much for making the time. Now, the last time you would have spoken to representatives of the Caribbean Yard campus, mm -hmm. it was Earth and the Sky. So how is dry, how is the dry season courses different from right, the Earth and the Sky? Right. Good start because Earth and Sky is our certificate program. It runs for one year, <clears throat> right? But at dry, in the, um, in our annual for the year, we have three seasons, all right, our dry season, which starts in April, um, what we call mango season, which is our children's program during July, August, and then we have our rainy season program, which starts in September. Those are all three month. In fact, the, 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 the dry and the rainy season are three month courses, as against the earth to sky, which is a certified program and runs the entire year. Of course, that's the program in carnival design, earth to sky. Let me bring in, please, Mr. Burton. Looking at, it's, it's 2018, we spoke about dance. You spoke about dancing at the intersection. And looking at that time, since that time, we've seen a few things, including the pandemic. Uh, what did you mean in 2018? And has that changed now? Dancing at the intersection. Well, for me, those are two, dance and intersection are two philosophical uh, concepts. I mean, dance is philosophy. It's something we've lost sight of in our age, but in traditional cultures, um, including in the West, definitely in Africa and in India and in China, there's this idea that, that, that the, the, the very structure of, the, of reality is that of a dance. Um, so in Hinduism, they talk about the Ram Leela. Leela translates as dance or drama or play. It's the same concept. And the whole universe, the whole world is a, is a lila, <laughs> it's a dance. So it's a philosophical concept. And for us, that means in our space, in every space really, but it's so pronounced and so laid bare as it were in our space, where we are, the, we are born of, of a dancing intersection through the traditions and the processes and forces that brought us here. And it makes me smile, because sometimes when I say things, People say, no man, you're sounding like a high man. <laughs> and the way that that answer would have danced through different aspects, and you well, to me, I understood everything, or at least I think so, and I give thanks for that. But the way that a lot of our knowledge and the way we create knowledge and share knowledge can seem very kind of foreign to others and sometimes can even seem foreign to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the things that you're tackling? Because I'm looking at one of the things that's happening is philosophizing the Caribbean, looking at contemporary issues. Uh, how does that answer tie in to this course? Does it? And what are some of the other courses you're dealing with? All right. But we have philosophy. I'm dealing with the courses now. We have philosophy, philosophizing the Caribbean. We have a new course that we call Conversations, Indigenous Conversations. Um, and that is very interesting because here we are bringing together uh, the Lokono people, the, the um, Garifuna people okay, from Belize, uh, the um, Cariban people, uh, and the Warao. So four indigenous languages okay, from the region that for the first time they are coming together to show, because th that course is really a, an introduction to indigenous culture, the culture of, of the indigenous people. Then we have Sweet Broom and Bitter Bush, which is our course in herbal, traditional herbal medicine. Right? So that's the, that's the program that we have. Um, in terms of the intersection that you're talking about, that is between the, 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 the ways in which 
dance, as, 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 as Bhutan was talking about, dance knowledge and traditional knowledge that we are focusing on. Um, our, our, our entire program deals with the ways in which we experience and generate and create knowledge. Right? We see ourselves in the Caribbean as creators of knowledge, creators of new knowledge, frankly speaking, because in the intersection of civilizations that came here, something new had to come out of it. It wasn't always recognized. I mean, some writers felt that, you know, we had no history and there was nothing that came out of the Caribbean, nothing new. But we are a new civilization. You know, it takes time. And uh, we believe, in terms of our philosophy, that is, as, as you wish, that we are, we, we are, our, our, our future must be powered by our indigenous intelligence, really. Our way of seeing, of perceiving the world, and of being in the world, you know, um, and dance is one of those, dance is one of those areas, you know. But looking at the, sometimes it feels as though philosophy can get a rap where people say it's only people looking at the sky or navel gazing and not necessarily doing anything. How do you marry, I don't know if it's a bit of praxis, Mr. Burton, <laughs> in terms of thinking about something that needs to be done, doing it, and then philosophizing and saying, was that the right course of action? How can we do it a little different? Uh, how, do you, how do you treat that process? Well, and I think you make a good point. Our people are involved in a praxis of philosophizing, of an intellectual praxis. I mean, praxis means an intellectual engagement. Okay? Paulo Freire says that um, for human beings, it's not just an occupation, but a preoccupation. Our action is a preoccupation, not just an occupation. We are always thinking things through. And that is very much evident in our own Caribbean creativity. What is also evident is that we have hardcore philosophical traditions passing through here. Um, whether it is the shamanic knowledge of the First Peoples, the, the, the very complex understandings of reality found in Congo and Yoruba, Ifa, um, philosophical, philosophical traditions, or we can speak of Hindu and Christian and Western philosophy. That's all here. You know? So we have these very heavy traditions passing through here, together with a people that are constantly philosophizing as a praxis. They use that very good word you use. So, so how then at this intersection do we pull all this together and allow us space for this thing to become to become more structured? Because in a way that's a weakness. In a certain sense, you can say almost specific to Trinidad. We don't always structure things very well. Elsewhere in the Caribbean, even in the English speaking Caribbean, you you know, that might not be the case to the extent that it is here. So we how, how do we do that? You know, and that's what we are grappling with. <laughs> and in terms of that grappling, I wanna get back mm -hmm. to you just now, Mr. Gibbons, but we take a short break. We are speaking with Burton Sankarali as well as Roll Gibbons, looking at the dry season courses from Caribbean Yard Campus for 2024. Stay with us. We'll return after this. Welcome back. We are having conversation about the dry season courses 2024 from Caribbean Yard Campus. And I see in dates Monday 8th April to Saturday 29th June 2024. Mm. Three months. Three months. Three so months. how mm. do people get on? How do people well, decide? Can do people do more than one course? Yes, what is yes, that like? Yes, because we each course is on a different day, right? So it's timetable like that. And some people do that. They take two. They take, well, two is normally quite full. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so on, on Mondays we have the, the Sweet Broom and Bitterbush, the traditional medicine course. On Tuesdays is when we have the philosophy. Philosophizing, yeah. Uh, and on Wednesdays we have the um, indigenous conversations. Right? And in some cases we also have part of the course on Saturdays as well. So, is it physical, know, virtual? It's, it's mostly virtual, right? But we mix it. Um, you know, like the, the philosophy is, is virtual, for instance. But in the case of the traditional medicine, there's a lot of field work that people do. That's one you know? of the things I wanted yeah, to yeah, ask yeah, about yeah, because yeah, yeah. they have some plans look kind of similar. 
Yeah. But you, you don't want to be putting Carapule in your in so you don't want to be putting name thinking as Carapule in yeah. your butt. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so so being able to so being able to treat with it like what, that I think is that's important. exactly what the course does. It allows you to it enables you to identify the plants. Ordinary plants, they are in your backyard and how to use them. It shows you how to use them, you know, which ones are poisonous or whatever. It may be dangerous. Because safety is always a prerequisite for all that we do in in that in that particular course. Yeah. I think it's so important. Um, and the way that you talk about there's things that are just around us, the way that people mm -hmm. speak sometimes, not knowing or being able to look at something and grab a piece of knowledge because mommy said just a word to the wise is sufficient and being able to extrapolate that to deal and even looking at that as philosophy. Uh, how important do you think that is, Mr. Burton, in terms of helping us draw a little closer to ourselves? Because there's so many things that are around us, but we just yeah. kind of it there, so we don't really. And we don't, it. and we don't appreciate it, mm -hmm. and we don't appreciate the philosophizing processes we engage in. Like it is very important mm -hmm. the wisdom we get from elders, like you just, as you just mentioned there. Um, in, in fact, I mean, even in the area of religion, whole religious texts, like it, with the Bible, there's a whole section in the Bible that goes back to this kind of elder wisdom. And it's so much part of our different, uh, our African cultures mm -hmm. and our Indian cultures. And, and there are also sites where we philosophize. In one of our philosophizing courses, we actually did the lime, the liming space as a philosophizing space. And, and how the liming enables us to engage in philosophical inquiry and discussions. And you can have some very good discussions in the old rum shop, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that also links with. Um, that, that business about drawing on our environment. But the reason why we're doing the other course that we have there, the, the, the indigenous conversations, because so much of our landscape, as in Trinidad in particular, bears indigenous names. You know, Tagarigua, Tunapuna, and so mm. on. And we don't know what they mean. You know, and we should. Because it's part of our own understanding of our space. You know, you know when, when, when indigenous people name the space, it's not like Europeans. It is not a name imposed upon the space. It's a name drawn from the characteristics of the space, what the space offers. You know, so they speak to the space in that way. As again saying, well, you know, this is Gibbon's land or something, you know. So that, that, that's the kind of thing. So we feel that in, in, in doing this course, you're beginning to come to terms with the landscape that we have, among other things, of course. I'm not sure if it's scaling it up, I'm not, not sure if it's a progression, but in terms of a uh, course like Sweet Broom and Bitterbush, is there a meeting point that you're working towards where you can have traditional healing, meeting the, and I say traditional healthcare system at this point in time that yeah. has been established and formalized along certain lines? Yeah. What what kind of engagement is there or well, the potential yeah, for Yeah, that's such? true. It's, it's there in the course because we call that course the science of traditional medicine. So we, 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 we don't only look at the folk practices, the, the traditional practices as it were. We also look at the science of the thing. We look at the, 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 the sort of botanic qualities, composition of the, of the plants. We look at the, quality, the, 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 um, the usages, as I said, in terms of you know, what is safe and what is not safe. Right? And that requires science. Um, and, and, and generally, generally, and we, 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 we encourage people to do research. A lot of the science is there. You know, it's available on PubMed and so on, various sites. And so our participants go and they find out more about the plants, right? the botanical names of the plants and so on. Right? And, and, and that's it. So we balance the two in that way. I mean, it's always, it's never, it's never um, complete, mind you. Yeah? Yeah, you know, there's always a bit of a tension between the two sometimes, but um, you know, we work along. In fact, the the our team for that particular course, we have the shaman, right, right, um, Christo Adonis, the shaman of the first peoples here. We have a Garifuna elder, Garifuna being from Belize, uh, who is also into traditional medicine, and we have a scientist, right. Alan Theory, right, who is very, very knowledgeable about both about plants and about the science of medicine. It would be interesting so to speak really to that person because I have a friend who did Western medicine mm. 
And then she said, no, it, had to be, it, it has to be more. And then she went and did Chinese medicine. Yeah. So while she can be uh, prescribing something along these lines, you'll also hear her start to talk about uh, acup acupuncture and moxibustion and these sorts of things too. Yeah. Just horses for courses. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, and part of the issue that we found in the course is that people, I mean, this, this is why we did the course in the first place, because people in Trinidad and in the Caribbean generally practice their traditional medicine. And then they go to the, mm -hmm. to the doctors, and the doctors don't know anything about it. You know, or sometimes they may be taking um, medication, prescribed medication, and at the same time taking traditional medicine. And the two may not go together. So the doctors need to be informed. Medical practitioners need to be informed, as well as, of course, the our general public needs to know a lot about the plants that they're using. And in terms of general knowledge and finding out more, 3550966 is the number to mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. to get more information mm -hmm. about what the Caribbean Yard Campus is doing. Reminding you, it starts Monday 8th April. It goes till the 29th of June. Gentleman Burton Sankarali, Royal Gibbons, we want to mm -hmm. thank you so much. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstar. Thank you so much for joining us.